after 41 oh, yeah. years of it in the game. Mm-hmm. And I've had a, what I think I've had the most fantastic flying career in my, anybody could have had. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm very, very, very lucky. There you are. Perfect. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I fly aeroplanes. I don't play. I, I must get my five-year-old granddaughter to have a look. <laughs> I really. <laughs> um, Tony, How do you do? Hi. <laughs> yeah, it's so wonderful to meet you here on Zoom, and I see you on the background. Um, you've got uh, some photographs and things uh, from your time in in the in the Air Force. Yeah, some of these photo, a lot of these photographs. There's some of the training my son. My son's on different airplanes. They're also in the air force. Yeah. And the one there, the one up there with two of us standing is my eldest son. I did a vampire conversion for him. But yeah. both my sons flew in the air force, and they're both airline guys now. Wonderful. So so inspired by their dad. Yeah, I've taken yeah. them. Oh, my daughter and my son's in Harvard with me and flying in the T6 Harvard aerobatics, etc., including my daughter. So all yeah. of the kids have been with us. Oh, that is such a privilege, really. Mm. But now, um, Colonel Tony Smith, you have a very, a very um, long career in the Air Force. And can you tell me the story, how you, what, first inspired you to fly? What was the interest? Well, first of all, my father was in the Air Force from yeah. 1936. He, up through the war, he was a bomber pilot on 21 Squadron, flying Baltimore's up north during the war, and then back to Pretoria. So basically, he was in the Air Force right through till 1952, 53. So we lived... As kids, we lived on the Air Force Base uh, most of the time. Oh, uh, so, and I wanted to fly from there on. Mm-hmm. So, my brother and I, and both my sons, fly. Yeah, and and you talking about the Air Force Base where you lived? Was that in Pretoria? Yes, Air Force Base Swatkop mm-hmm. in Pretoria. Yeah. Okay, and then um, so you then started your career in in the Air Force and. Um, how did that then develop for you? How did you, um, so you trained first as a pilot? Yes. Mm-hmm. No, what happened is I was taken out of school just before my final matric year and made to go and work. Okay. So I was 16 years old and I started apprenticeship as an electrician for seven years, did my engineering degree then, only then at 23 years old that I managed to get into the Air Force to fly. My father said, you're going to do a trade first because he'd spent his whole life in the Air Force. And do you think this was an advantage that you had? Yes, it was actually. Yeah, Mm -hmm. because I've got the engineering background, which later came into effect when I did test pilots course, et cetera. And now, um, so you lived there and this was your life. What was now the interest you doing this uh, restoration project, um, this Spitfire restoration project? How did this come about? What was the interest there? Well, what happened is, you know, uh, I was um, officer commanding and director of the South African Air Force Museum at one stage. And we rebuilt a lot of the old wartime aircraft, which we never had any... um, Kept, the Air Force had never kept a lot of them, they put them into scrap. So we ended up restoring quite a few aeroplanes up to, and then the Spitfire was on a pole. It had been up on a pole at Waterkloof, and the one we did have somehow got spirited out of our country and sold to an American. Mm. Uh, let's just go back a little bit. We had a private guy bought a Spitfire that was also on a pole in Cape Town. Oh, okay. A, and he rebuilt it, but the Air Force helped him. And they said, on con- we'll help you on condition that the, the Air Force operates it as well. And we maintained okay. it after it. And then all of a sudden, this aircraft, he flew it away one weekend. It never came back. 
And the next thing we heard, it was on a ship on its way to America. <gasps> a guy had sold it to American Golf Corporation, a chap called David Price. And of course, there was all Hades let loose. Um, how can we let this thing go? The public got up in arms. And eventually I said, look, okay, give me authority to take the one off the pole. That was at the, at the base at Watercliffe and we'll rebuild it, which we did. And it took seven years restoring it um, to flying condition. And that's where, we, where it ended up. We had had a flying aeroplane. Okay. Oh. And then we, we were, um, I was officer commanding the museum at the time. We flew it and I said to them, only the people who were current flying Harvards and the big tail dragger type aircraft will fly our museum, Spitfire and the Mustang. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, it ended up that one of the guys flew it and um, ended up with a, a wheels up <laughs> landing on it. Um, one wheel up, one wheel down. And it uh, got slightly bent, which wasn't bad. It could have been three months, it could have been bad. But then it was put into the hangar and just left at the time. Because I was, by then, I was out of there back as a squadron commander and a director at the Air Force headquarters. So I was not boss of the museum at the time. So it's just stood there. Now we've, you know, with people coming and saying, why don't we get the Spitfire flying? Because our South African public are very pro the military and pro our, our military mm -hmm. aircraft. Because mm -hmm. we take part in air shows with them and boosts, boost their air shows, etc. Mm -hmm. So we got it flying. We got the P-51 hours flying. Um, we sent our Harvards, etc. various aeroplanes. Mm -hmm. And the no. Spitfire is quite a, um, a unique plane because of, of how it came about and that it, it was so um, important during the war, during the Second World War. Yes, we yeah. had nine, nine Spitfire squadrons up north, flying really? Spitfires, yes. Yeah. And your, uh, you said your dad was part of that? Well, did he also fly the Spitfire? No, no, he flew initially a little bit, but then he was on bombers, on Baltimore bombers. Oh, bombers. On 21 yeah. Squadron in North Africa and Italy. Okay. Yeah, and he was yeah. then up, up during the war from 1943 to 1946 on the, and when they ferried all the people back after the war. Okay. And have you flown the, the Spitfire yet, or a yes, Spitfire? Yes, only flown yeah. once, yes. Oh, really? Yeah, but I flew the Mustang most of the time. Okay. The P-51. But, but um, I, I heard an um, American pilot said that, uh, they asked him what the difference is between uh, flying a, a Spitfire and flying a fighter plane, and he said you get into a fighter plane, but you but you uh, put on a Spitfire. You, you, you put yeah. on a Spitfire, yeah. <laughs> As we said, the British aeroplanes, you've got to get in and get inside and you're in. Oh, okay. The American aeroplanes put a, a great big easy chair inside and the Coke bottles and the, the, the yeah. ice machines. <laughs> All right, I'm being funny now, but you get in a yeah. 51 cockpit and it's yeah. a big aeroplane, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But now, um, how far are you in this new uh, restoration uh, project? Because right. I, saw you, I saw you built the hangar. We are busy building the hangar. Okay. We're busy trying to get funds now. We had enough funds to be able to put up the foundations and the framework. Okay. We're now waiting for funds, which will be approximately... I would say around 85,000 Rand, South African Rand, which is divided by 20 uh, 40 pounds type of thing, um, to finish building it. And once we've got that, because the little hangers we've got, we're doing in corners, and you to do a big restoration, is it's, it's, it's impossible. So we're building a new hangar, full restoration hangar, a big one, which is 32 by 15 um, feet, uh, meters, sorry, um, where we will do all the restorations, like 
the Mustang will bring back on service. It just needs a re-compact service and wingtips and a couple of things done. And the, and the Spitfire and any other restoration, we can do purely restorations in those hangars. They're specific with machinery and everything else. Oh, but that's amazing. So it's for the future. You built this now for the future for all restoration works. Yes. Mm. But now the Spitfire specifically, what needs to be done on the Spitfire? Well, it, it, it got fairly bent. The whole tail section snapped off just in front of the elevator, the tailplane section, snapped off complete. Um, the front end, the engine and cowlings got messed up and the wings got fairly bent because it went through a a concrete fence, a thin concrete fence, at a wall around the base, and he hit the wall flat on, on sort of belly wise. So it got fairly big. Excuse me. That's fine. And um, and I actually um, read that just the wing of the Spitfire has around three thousand parts. Whoa! Yes, lots. Really? <laughs> no, no, look, the British, the British built a wing where you've got lots of little braces and yeah. bits and pieces and rivets and, yeah, no, look, it, it, it is a fairly complicated, um, um, let's see, reconstruction, but it's, it's fine. It's, it can yeah. be done. There's a lot of sheet metal work to be making short little uh, struts inside, and they're all made by steel being flat bent up so they're like a U in, in all these little brace pieces etc etc so do you have engineers now who specifically do restorations or that they know no, no, of no. 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 no, okay. no. We've, we've got there are lots of guys around and lots of the ex air force retired guys they help they love they love the job and then we've got an engineering company um, that helps us as well outside a lot of the public uh, engineering companies and uh, aviation companies help us. Okay. So we would have a team that'll put it, get it going in a, once we got the new hangar going. And how much do you try to stay with the, with the way it was built? You know, like historically, uh, all the, the inside little small parts, uh, do yeah. you try and keep it? Like exactly that? the same. Exactly okay. the same. Okay. All right. Obviously, we use new rivets, but we use the same yeah. type of rivet, the same metal. You know, they've got the BS four one three O type metals and whatever. And um, yeah, so we we use try and be as accurate as possible with everything. Yeah. Naturally, with now some of the stuff you can't get, but yeah. we, we we may do we may. Uh, physically make new parts. But now how how much do the younger um, pilots uh, and, and younger, even younger, the younger generation, because of course the, the Spitfire was very much part of the war and it it they stopped making it also after the war. Um, mm -hmm. How important do you think that it is that, and, and especially in a country like South Africa, that you restore this and keep this uh, well, in flying the, condition. Yeah, the youngsters are very keen, actually. And what we do with this is to, we try and do a project where, where our young African kids, you know, that that are not into aviation or haven't been for years, they're slowly coming in now. And we use this as a training project with sheet metal, with building up thoughts, with doing things. So the idea is to bring some of these kids in um, via the technical colleges and they come and work on it as well. Oh, I see. But that's a wonderful With, with the instructors. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the Spitfire, what is the plan now? What is the, uh, the time frame that you have when this will be done? Well, look, we are busy with the hangar. Okay. If as our framework's on, now we've got to get funds to close it in. And then we'll move the airplanes in, we'll mount the jigs permanently, and we can actually, once this is done, we can make more fuselages. 
we could make two or three Spitfire fuels larges once we got the jigs and we'll permanently mount jigs for the Mustang, the Spitfire, Harvard, etc. And it'll be a restoration hangar. And we'd be able to do other restorations there as well. Yeah. And that can be used for apprentice training of engine fitters, airframe, sheet metal, yeah. electrical wiring, making up wiring looms. Hope to have a section where you make up the wiring looms for various aircraft. So it'll be a big training project. Mm. Yeah. And now, how how is it about uh, with the fundraising? Is it easy? It easy it's to battling. get. It's battling. It's battling. Yeah, it's it's difficult at, at the times. The economies, you know, as they are. But we've still got people uh, mm -hmm. that are very keen, and the youngsters. We've got a lot of youngsters that come in and work polishing airplanes cleaning the museum airplanes, uh, washing out the hangars really? every Saturday, every Saturday, yeah. Oh, this so the, is amazing. Yeah. The, the enthusiasm is there. And once you get a project like the Spitfire going, yeah. um, for instance, when I rebuilt the Mustang, well, not me, my, my team when I was commander of the Air Force Museum, on a, we used to work on Saturdays and Sundays as well. Where our wives came in, the, really? the girls and the kids had, we had a paint stripper, they were paint stripping parts, cleaning them, hanging them up. Come lunchtime, the girls were making a barbecue for us. Well, you know, so it, it was a whole family affair at one stage. Mm -hmm. At the moment, it's difficult with modern times and stuff on bases to get in and do that. Yeah. But, but we, uh, we had a whole family, all our families, ground crew and air crew. That's and, wonderful. Yeah. That, that's been like a, a, a real big family that you yes, have. Yes, it actually, yeah. it's amazing. It gets outside people. We, had, we have what we call the friends of the museum. That those people are civilians that come every Saturday. And the first half of the month is a big day where they do restoration and cleaning hangars and polishing all the old airplanes that are standing outside. Um, now, the friends of the museum are all part of the slot, and they're civilian guys. They're businessmen, big businessmen. Really? <gasps> you know, and we yeah. all put the overalls on and we all get the work done. Mm -hmm. uh, but how they, fantastic, yeah. And that keeps the that keeps the museum going, and, and uh, are they... Also, a lot of people still visiting and coming to look at the planes that you have. At the there. moment, it's getting better, but with this COVID, this last fourteen oh, months yeah. has been yeah. difficult because nobody was allowed onto the base. Mm. It oh, was yeah. the base, even only, the base only allowed a number, a certain number of people to work on the base at a time during COVID. Okay. But now mm. it's opening up, and things are coming right again. Thank goodness. So hopefully we'll be back at full blast soon. Yeah, and yeah. This, is so, this is so exciting. This project, really, that um, and I, and like you say, this hangar that you've built that and and bringing future restoration projects as well. Yes. But how difficult is it for you to get the parts for these uh, uh, for the Spitfire? Because I see there's a lot of restoration projects over the world. Yeah. Um, going on and do you can you get obtain these parts well people are making new parts for them now okay they, yeah there are people like the uk build a lot of spitfire parts yeah. americans have got parts for p51 mustangs and harvards and things um we at, at our engineering shops make some parts certain parts like if a wing got crumpled up and you haven't got these little struts which are about um, a little bigger than that. They make yeah, them just make hold them it up a little bit higher at the air depot. They, you know, oh, a I little see. bit okay. bigger than this. They make yeah. them at the air depot, like all the little struts, especially the Spitfire, which has got hundreds of these little things in, mm -hmm. or struts and, and um, brace pieces in. Mm -hmm. But so uh, it's it's an I ideal training for apprentices. Yeah new sheet metal apprentices there for engine engine apprentices overhauling the Merlin engine and we've overhauled a couple here yeah, our Mustang engine and the uh, 
Spitfire engine but overall locally. And at one stage, I think when the guys were busy with the Mustang engine, I sent the, the Spitfire engine went overseas and was a friend of mine in the UK who's got vintage aircraft and he wanted something we've got. So we gave it to him and we said, all right, you take our engine and have it done at vintage V12s in America. And we exchange parts with each other. Oh, that's amazing. Guys around the world want this. We need that. They've got that. We've got this. And we do exchange. Wow, this is this is so interesting. So um, so you are connected with people then around yes. the world. Yeah. Oh, yes. Wonderful. And you know, we don't worry about politics. Oh, okay. in, this, in this game, we're not politicians. We don't yeah. worry about politics. Yeah. Um, we all work together. It doesn't matter who we are. Yeah. Well, it, it seems that when, uh, when, uh, when aviation is in the blood, then you are just uh, different. You know, it's, it's well, like, yeah. Maybe I'm a bit of a nutcase. <laughs> 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 was it 80, 85? I still fly and I'm up really? in executive jets as well. Um, so it's one of those things. People think I'm mad. But... No, but amazing that you still fly. Yeah. Yeah. No, 100% fit. So my, both my sons were in the Air Force. They yeah. both went to the airline. So, uh, and my brother. So he flies as well. But he flies privately. Okay, mm. so a lot of lot of uh, aviators there in the family. Yeah. And what do you plan to do with this Spitfire now when it's uh, finished with this restoration? Will um, will you be flying it as well? No, I'll get one of the test pilot guys, the museum okay. test pilot guys, to fly it. No, no, okay. and, uh, it, it wouldn't be fair with me now. Yeah. And um, and will it be used for air shows and so on? Yes, oh yes, definitely. Yeah. Now that things are opening up again, we've, mm -hmm. our air shows will start. We had a little one the other day. We have a, every Saturday a flying day. Oh, where the guys okay. keep flying the museum airplanes, keep current, etc. Yeah. So, and then a lot of the people come in and watch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But now oh, the okay. base is opening up. The COVID yeah. thing is not quite as drastic as it was. Yeah. So um, Saturdays is a flying day and the public are welcome in. Amazing. So more than half of Air Force Base Swatko is now museum area. Oh, I see. Okay. The southern half is still operational with the, the helicopter squadrons, I said. So it's still, you know, they have got to just allow people in when necessary. Yeah. And they're allowed to come up to the museum side, then the other side is uh, locked off. Mm. Yeah. But this is wonderful that they that they allow that and that these that it's still um living, you know, that that yeah. they're flying and, and people can come and watch and I'm sure young young people will also get inspired by that. Yes. The big yeah. thing now is um now I don't like saying when I when I was there, but I used to get pilots from the different squadrons. We didn't have a specific museum pilot other than myself and my number two. But generally, I've got guys that say on the lightish aircraft that were flying light aircraft, the Kudus, the Cessna 185s, they would fly the light museum tail dragger aircraft. Okay. And then we'd get the jet pilots to come and fly the Vampire um, Impala, etc. And then the transport guys would fly the DAC. Oh, I the see. DC3. So, so we had the different pilots. We kept the guys that were current on the similar type of aeroplane. Mm. But because you don't just get a guy to come and fly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because that happened once and we ended up with two broken aeroplanes. Oh, I see. I just, you know, um, which is not very clever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And you, do you still train? Yes, oh, yes. I'm an examiner for civil aviation as well. So where I can, I do training on a lot of executive jets and the turboprop aircraft and light oh. aircraft. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. This is, this is so interesting to talk to you and it's uh, wonderful. I think this is such a great 
uh, project that you are doing and um, and it's so great to hear about all the work that's been going on at the at the Air Force Museum as well because I think this is so important. It is, yeah. I, um, you know, um, all right at the moment with the economy as it is, it's a battle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've got to try and get things going again now, get businesses involved, you know, and then if yeah. the business gets involved, we'll have a an advertisement on the hanger for it. So and so business is assisted. If a, yeah. if a fuse large rebuild and this guy did the engine parts and whatever it is, you know, it could be a big advertising for businesses as well. Yeah, that's a great yeah. idea. And we've worked with overseas museums a lot. I mean, I worked with guys all over the state, America and the British museums the Royal Air Force Museum, the Swiss Museum. Um, I was in Switzerland, the Swiss Museum. And uh, what did we do something with the JU-52, Tatajou? Really? Uh, with the Swiss Museum. So, you know, museums don't worry about the politics. We just get on with it. Yeah, yeah. great. Because we all work together at one stage and it's time we all work together again. Yeah, no, I, I like that attitude and I think that's how it should be. I agree. Yeah. yeah no, hundred percent. Well, I I heard a lovely story about the um about uh, the women. I didn't realize, but women did the test flying for the um, Spitfire during the war. Yes. Yeah, I really uh, didn't know that. They flew Spitfires. They flew Lancasters. They flew Wellington bombers. What happened is that when the guys were fighting, wherever they were, the girls took the new aeroplanes and flew them out and delivered them to the squadrons. Yeah. And we did test flying on them. Oh, no, look, they did one heck of a job. Yeah. I really didn't know that. And, and uh, yeah, that was very interesting to know. And, and I've actually uh, heard about one of these women who wrote her name in the Spitfire. Uh, in the hope that uh, one of the pilots would see the name and contact her. I uh, think, wasn't that Rosamund? Uh, somebody I can't had. remember her name now, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, that was so sweet as, as <laughs> you know, like a... <laughs> a little romantic idea of the, the Spitfire. That's for me such a lovely be, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the girls built the Spitfires, eh? Yeah. All lady, ladies building Spitfires. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I mean, without them, the war would have come to a halt. They mm. were building engines, they were building the aircraft, or various, lots of different airplanes. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. And, and yeah, we, we don't always realize that. You know, when you hear these stories about the war and, and the fighters, but there were a lot of women behind that. Yeah, oh yes, for sure. Yeah. 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 As, as girls are behind us anyway, all, all our lives. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I surely hadn't been behind me with everything, you know, and our kids, mm -hmm. our wives and our kids got involved. And, you know, without backing of your wife, you can't get a job done. Especially yeah. if it's a job that takes your weekends and things. Yeah. yeah. But luckily, they got involved. Our wives got involved. Yeah. And backed us 100%. Yeah. And it's wonderful that it's, in, I think, on, in, on a military base as well, it's all all the families are really part of it and, and oh, yes. know and understand each other. And, yeah. yeah. You become like, like a... <laughs> A, a big family on such a, a yeah. military base. Yeah, you know, yeah. especially if there's a wartime, something going on, and the guys are away at war, the girls yeah. support each other, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ladies, girls, I, I've got to be careful how I do things these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> politically correct. But exactly. Yeah. I'm an old guy, so I can lie. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I think we all like to be called girls. Yeah, good show. And then we feel younger. <laughs> That's the ticket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now, Tony, you also told me that you're writing a book. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
And well, about, it's about time. I've, so many people have said, write a book. I've, I've actually got a, a whole pile. I've got 14 logbooks lying around here. Now. Really? But I've got a, that I'm going through. Mm. And um, some of the stuff that I've done with photographs for oh, way back. A bit to the, how is a little bit in the screen? Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, wow. Various things went away on operations, etc. Then into my civil flying and training pilots all over Africa. Really? So, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So you have a lot of stories to tell. So I've, I've been busy with that. That's going to take a while. Yeah. And I'm lazy. I'm very lazy with doing <laughs> Really? <laughs> but do you find it easy to, um, to write, you yeah. know, do you, do you? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Look, I, I've got friends that are very clever with the layout of books and English thing. I'm yeah. writing. As oh, okay. I, I write the story and I put it there. And then if it comes to editing, I've got a couple of friends that can edit one day. Yeah. But all mm -hmm. I've got to do is get on with it. Yeah. yeah the big <laughs> difficulty is where to start and when to stop. After 41 oh, yeah. years of it in the game, mm. and I've had a what well, I think I've had the most fantastic flying career in my, anybody could have had. Really? Mm. Yeah, I'm very, very, very lucky. Mm. Did you do a lot of commercial flying as well? Not anymore. Okay. When I left the Air Force, I became chief pilot of a National, National Airways Corporation, flying HS 125s and Beach 1900s and King Airs and uh, and test flying various light aircraft and uh, executive jets. And that I did until I retired, but I carried on again and I still do a lot of it. Yeah. So, um, well, not that much anymore because we, we live in the nice in the, in the game park. Oh, okay. Shirley's a bush girl. She likes it out amongst the animals and, and uh -huh. the bush. So we're in, a, we're in a private game reserve now. Wow. About 30 kilometers out of Pretoria. Yeah. How oh, amazing. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is beautiful. It is, actually. It's yeah. Peaceful and the animals walk around our house here. Yeah. What a privilege. Mm. Yeah. So, um, but Tony, this was so lovely to talk to you, but I first want to know what is your uh, wish for the future now? Uh, um, number one is that people worldwide get together and that a lot of that is what we managed to do with the museums. When I worked with the British RAF, Royal Air Force Museum in Hendon and uh, the Dubendorf in Switzerland and in America, the various museums in the States, the guys came and visited there, we visited there and we exchanged parts quietly and I have had friends with shipping companies and so and so I'll pop it on a ship, it used them for me and I'd pop something on a ship in Cape Town to send over there. Um, the politicians can sort themselves out. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. problem. But we work, we work together, and we help each other. And actually, we never had a hassle with any any of those problems. So, luckily, that worked. Yeah. And I think you know, if you think how we worked with guys that were supposed to be anti us or we anti them or whatever, they can't believe it. You know, yeah. it's, it's it's quite amazing. Mm. Yeah, if, if we can have more of that in the future. Yeah, definitely. for sure. Yeah. But I think things I think things are starting to work together. Yeah. I think, mm -hmm. yeah. I think also after the pandemic we've realized that how much we need each other and how much yeah. connected we are all. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So well, I think the whole world is working together at the moment. I exactly. Think. Yeah. Because for yeah. once we were all in the same situation. Yeah. Now, Tony, just one last thing. Um, 
Can you do a shout out for a restaurant or a coffee shop in the area? Do you have somewhere where you go and visit frequently in Pretoria? Oh, or? Yes. yes, oh yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, or is Shirley the best cook? Sorry? Is Shirley yeah, the best cook? The mug and bean in Pretoria. Well, oh, okay. Yeah. 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 There are a few coffee shops actually that we've that we go to. to. Yeah, yeah, we go lots of different places. Oh, okay. We don't yeah. sit around here in the bush all the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're our neighbors here, look, each of us have got about 2,900 something square meters of ground. Oh, really? But it's just bush around yeah. us. The house, we've got a little fence just to stop the, the um, uh, wild pigs and things and war dogs mm. and animals coming in, banging on the front door. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah. We've got a little fence, and then our neighbor's just about 200 meters from us in the bush. So you yeah. don't see your neighbor's house. Oh, I see. And, and, and it's, a big game, it's a private game reserve. So, yeah. And lions? Do you have lions? Well, you haven't got lions in here. Oh, okay. We've, we've had the odd leopard come through, yeah. but generally the lions are next door. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Shirley got up six o'clock one morning and looked out of the kitchen window and a leopard walked past the front dry driveway in front. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, scary, but beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you know, they generally, we haven't got those, uh, yeah. the, big, the big five, as they call them, the elephants, because oh, okay. they just take out lots of things. The elephants oh, yeah. Yeah. flatten a lot. Um, mm. But we've got virtually everything else. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And of course, probably a lot of birds as well. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Sure, these birds here on the veranda, they come in every morning. Lots and lots and lots really? of them come yeah. and visit. Yeah. Well, Especially I... the horn, hornbills and the little birds. Um, oh, various ones. Yeah. Mm. Wow, Tony, this sounds amazing where you live. Really? Oh, it, is. Yeah. it is fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, it was. You can really... always get you a nice stand over here. You could buy and have yeah. your bush house. <laughs> your new, I'll be your new neighbor then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Tony, I hope I get to meet you in person one day. You will be welcome. Soon. Yeah. We will. And surely as well. We'll host you out here in the bush for a day or two. Yeah. Like? Oh, that would be sure. wonderful. I would, yeah. I would love to meet Shirley as well and uh, uh, see her wonderful animals that she has, that she admires yeah. around her. Well, <laughs> they're everywhere. They're in the bush. I mean, they're not just specific, but they Yeah, no, no, I know, yeah. They, it's, luckily, it's open. <laughs> but but I'm, sure they, I'm sure they know that she's uh, fond of them. Well, Giraffe puts its head over our little fence there and starts eating her plants and she says, hey, 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 there's some trees there, Gony. And the thing got up, turned around and walked around and it went to the trees. Really? <laughs> you know, it might be coincidence, obviously, but it, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, I have a lovely afternoon and um, uh, send my best regards to Shirley. I will. And as okay. I said, without her backing, I wouldn't be where I am today. Oh, so that's wonderful. Our, that's our wives are the stars in this whole thing, too. Yeah, it's we wonderful. The that... They backed us on the squadrons and it made a big difference if a yeah. guy's wife looks after them and backs them in their yeah. work. Because if you had yeah. a nagging wife, oh boy, that was yeah. a problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just being funny now. But, um, no, I know what yeah. you mean. No, I understand what you mean completely. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tony, thank you so much for your time. This was so wonderful. Pleasure. See and you soon. Give us a call if, when you come out this way. I will. We'll ensure that you looked after. Thank you so much. Okay, Tony. Bye. All the best. Thank you.